guys, welcome back to Everyday Sugar on the Desk at Academics and Reno here. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Hopefully you're enjoying your summer. Yo, as you get older, summers just don't even exist anymore. The shit's really sad. Yeah. I was telling my little cousin this the other day. Enjoy being bored in your summers. I miss that. Being professional like the year is one long ass day. <laughs> Bro. Just one long ass day. You disagree? What are you looking around at? No. What did y'all do for the weekend, man? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't at the Tycoon Fest, I'll tell you that. <laughs> tycoon Fest? I wasn't there. When all the thoughts were there, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I was watching that shit on Instagram live. <laughs> I wanted to be there. It was lit. I was like, you know that little meme where somebody's watching from inside the house, like, y'all wanna be there? <laughs> Trust me, that was me. I was like, damn, this shit looked like a motherfucker, Why man. Why didn't you pull up? I don't know, man. Nah, I wasn't invited like that. I didn't wanna just pull up and get turned away like Wendy Williams, I don't know. Yeah, that was crazy. So. Oh, okay. That was crazy. Um, all right, so last week uh, we talked about Jay-Z's new partnership with the NFL very briefly. Um, oh, and we had Rhapsody on Thursday. Shout out to Rhapsody. So we didn't get to dig into all the controversy that followed this announcement. Uh, so Jay and Roger Goodell did have a press conference to announce a new partnership with Rock Nation. And during this um, press conference, he definitely fielded a lot of questions about Colin Kaepernick's non-involvement and his status with the league. So here's his response when he was asked if he would kneel or stand during the national anthem. I think we past kneeling yeah i think it's time to go into uh, actionable items we all know the issue now okay next where are we moving on next and i'm not again so to be clear i'm not minimizing that part of it because that has to happen that's a necessary part of the process but now we all know what's going on what are we going to do how are we going to stop because the kneeling was not about a job it was about injustice so I'm not sure if he anticipated so much backlash from this. Um, they asked him why Kaepernick wasn't involved with the deal. He said, you'd have to ask him. I'm not his boss. I can't just bring him into something that's for him to say. But he did say that he did speak to Kaepernick about it, didn't reveal any details. So after the press conference, uh, TMZ published an article called Jay-Z spoke with Kaepernick ahead of the partnership. Um, Kaepernick's girlfriend, uh, Nessa, who's also a media personality, responded, tweeting, this is a lie. Colin never spoke to Jay-Z in the NFL ahead of that deal being done. They never included him in any discussion. She went on on Instagram to say, you know, it's typical for the NFL to buy different PR looks to cover up their dirt. That's nothing new. But what's disgusting and disappointing is Jay-Z let them use him. Um, she said she doesn't doubt his intelligence, so she's sure that he knew. Um, he helped the NFL bury someone who he said is iconic. Um, there's more to the story, including Jay apparently going to he's going to have a significant ownership interest in NFL. But just want to talk about this. People have very mixed feelings on this. At first, you guys seemed a little bit skeptical, but do you think all this backlash is justified? No, I, all right, so what I'm confused is, is this, right? I just don't understand that, like, I, I understand kind of what Captain Nick was trying to do, but I never knew what the goal was, but I don't understand when did it become a thing where everything done with anything concerning football has to go through him, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't understand where that comes from. On top of that, um, with Jay, we don't know the, the details of whatever he's, it is that he's doing. I, I read something that says there's supposed to be a social injustice initiative. Right. Right? So without anybody having true information, knowing everything it is, it's just like, oh, Jay-Z uh, just got in bed with the enemy or some shit. Mm -hmm. Rock Nation never stopped managing um, or representing football players. Football never stopped... Like, people never stopped playing football ever since Colin Kaepernick did what he did. And what he did was courageous, but he might have just, he sacrificed his career for that. But I just don't know what the end goal is or the end game. It's not like I heard Kaepernick say, yo, I'm trying to get everybody to stop playing football so we can start our own league or something like that. So I'm just confused as to what it actually is or what people want it to be. Right. Like, do you feel like Jay has earned enough trust at this point uh, for us to give him the benefit of the doubt here? Like Reno said, we still don't know the details of this partnership. No, of course, you should get a benefit of that, but I don't know why anyone would be um, shocked why he's getting backlash. Like, I know he uh, Jay has way more cultural capital than, like, a Kanye, but this is Kanye Trump all over. Like Kanye it, it, Trump? Wow, that's a... Yeah. Like, how? Again, In what aspect? Um, well, a lot of people view Trump. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'm going off of how the perception of a large majority of the black community, they view Trump as someone who is either fighting against a lot of the interest of black people and when they see someone who is aligning with him whether it's for their own selfish interests or not or it's some narcissistic shit it looked weird let's be clear unless people don't agree with this very premise the nfl people are viewing that league as the league that 
are trying to quiet and shun players that are speaking up for injustices that's happened against black people. Okay. So when you see Jay-Z, someone who we all love, sitting next to the nigga who is the representative of all the, I think it's 32 teams, 32, 32 owners, that's where you could draw that parallel. Okay, but just I'm just going to throw this in there if you're drawing that parallel. I understand the point you're making, understand why people are urged. But when we speak about Kanye and Trump, we also say that Kanye doesn't seem to know anything about Trump's policies or care about the things that he does. He just likes his personality and the dragon energy, right? At least Jay understands what the issue is at hand here, right? Can we at least say that? Yeah, well, well giving Jay more credit for being or seeming more educated, clearly, yes, but... Do I believe both of them had, are motivated by some self-interest? Yes, right? Do I think, and let's be clear, like Jay's about to own an NFL team, mm -hmm. you get me? Um, or have some significant ownership, we don't know. Well, I mean, we didn't, not like we never seen something like that coming just off the fact that like he runs, a, a Rock Nation has a sports agency, right? So it's like, I'm, I'm Yeah, but that sure. doesn't automatically entitle. No, entitle it, it doesn't entitle that. you. I'm just saying a, a person that's doing business in sports, right? If you're, if you're representing, uh, if your agency is representing players, wouldn't a goal be to own some sort of sports team in any field that you're representing players in? No, no, absolutely. And, and that's what I'm saying. The reason why I'm drawing that parallel mm -hmm. is because for both individuals, there's some self-interest there. But even if Kanye, which we all agree is um, way less educated about what um, really some of the things that the person he's standing next to stands for, mm -hmm. Some good did come from Kanye having that having that association or friendship, whatever you may call. You talk about Asap Rocky. No, I want to. I'm, well, I would say all of the black men that Kim K freed, which they would have never linked up if it wasn't for Kanye. She actually said that. So again, whether we want to indirectly give him credit, okay. maybe he particularly didn't do it, but we have to be be fair. We okay, so then fair. also I believe, if I remember correctly, last week you were talking about how this might not cause any change because the owners are still racist, etc. So if TMZ is correct, we don't know what team he might have an ownership stake in. Is this not part of the... Can you see a long game here then? If he has an ownership stake, right? We're talking about racist owners. Change can't happen if they're gone. So if he has an ownership ownership stake... Does that not mean that he could then implement bigger change down the road? Yes, but the way how it's done, and I think that's why everyone's the optics. a little bit. Yeah. Well, you, you can't you you can't basically say, hey, listen, I'm gonna imagine someone saying, hey, I'm gonna partner with the fucking bus association back then, but we're not gonna address the fact that Rosa Park got us at the back. But, but, but like, like, mean, like you have to address that at first. Okay. If Colin, and again, right. you don't gotta ask Colin. Right. right. You don't need that thing. It's a, but he should have mentioned it in the right. press conference. But, but if you're not something. addressing the elephant in the room, and the elephant isn't that Colin, because to be honest, like, it, uh, people do believe he should have some type of job, mm -hmm. but who knows if he's just not trying to take a job. My whole thing is, if you're not addressing the clear and obvious fact that he was kept out mm -hmm. by the owners, and if you're just taking if you're just taking a job to say, oh well, I'll just be one of the faces that will probably give him a chance, I just don't think. But that I give him a chance at what exactly? That's that's the thing. It's like give him a chance at what? I don't think that now. Yes, is Kyle, Colin Kaepernick still athletically fit and all of that? I don't think that football is his. Like I don't think that. He's trying to get back into the NFL still. I think that his what, what his message was that he built is way bigger than just the game. You know what I mean? I think that's is way bigger than just the game. It I, is, right? Because he, yeah, his advocacy has a big reach. But then that video he posted last week where he's working out and it's like, you know, yeah, basically but, I'm still ready three years later. But he also got a settlement. He got a big settlement from the NFL that wasn't disclosed. He has a, a deal with Nike. Like, I, I just feel like this, right? Like, if we protest, if... I don't know what the protest is actually about. Now, I know it was about social justice at one point, mm -hmm. but I think just for me being a consumer, I got lost along the way, right? Because with the NFL, I don't see black players stop playing football. I don't see, I think it's easy to pick easy targets, like Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. When Travis Scott, everybody used what he said about Mike Brown is, oh, we don't fuck with Travis Scott because he said this about Mike Brown, so he shouldn't perform. But nobody said nothing to Big Boy and Sleepy Brown. Mm -hmm. Nobody questioned nothing, but Travis Scott is the easy target. He he already know that he was in a position where he said something that he couldn't, you know, I wouldn't say comprehend or couldn't articulate a certain way. So 
now Big Boy and them is on the same platform, but nobody's saying nothing to them. I just think that I don't know, I, like people just don't have information and they look at stuff on the face and don't know what they're actually angry about. I don't know what people are actually angry about with this situation. But but that's why, you know, I think I've seen terms being thrown out in describing Jay-Z. Some people said sellout, some people said hypocrite. And, you know, I think it's really complex to really get into either one. But I think in terms of when people say he's a hypocrite, you mentioned Travis Scott. He's someone who personally urged Travis Scott don't right. perform in the Super Bowl. Now, it, it was later clarified recently that, you know, he didn't tell him not to perform because of Kaepernick or any of the social justice stuff. Mm -hmm. He was just saying, don't be second fiddle to Maroon 5. You should be the guy. And if that's the case, you know, I think it takes a different life of, was Jay-Z ever with the majority of people who were trying to abstain from, from um, the NFL? Because right now, it, it, it behooves him to be in bed with them. You can get a, get a team and all that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also, when you hear the, the, even the JD thing where supposedly someone else was offered pretty much the same deal, he told them not to take it. But then he. But do we know it. the details of this? So I this is it, producer right. Brian Michael Cox, right? So he was on a podcast on Dash Radio, basically saying that he heard, yeah. So uh, JD got offered, Jermaine Dupri got offered the same deal, the partnership that Jay has, and he got called and told not to take it. But did we get more details on why? Is it going to be like the Travis Scott thing, where later we figure out something else? Well, it might be, but 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 again, Jay has so much cultural capital. I feel like he did low key trade a little bit of it. For a partnership that I feel like the black community is looking like, I don't know if you need it. So, so again, the, the deal is hazy, yeah. but he's going to be in charge of setting up entertainment activities like the Super Bowl, and, and, and there's a social justice arm of it, which allegedly um, has to do with producing content to give players a voice to speak. Right. Right? And I think people are just saying, until they address what's in their face now, mm -hmm. this is kind of like a Band-Aid and a PR move, which I understand, of course, and Nessa goes hard for a man. I Absolutely, yeah, she should. But I, th I, can't, I can't disagree all the way that it's not a PR move. Mm -hmm. The only thing is I think people should just see people like Jay, like Kanye, all these motherfucking entertainers for who they are in terms of Jay, if you follow his moves in, in, in every different facet, like he's someone who boycotted the Grammys. You know, like, Jay's not someone who doesn't care about the black community, but also he cares about his wallet. Like, it, it, and there's that middle ground where y you could, maybe you sacrifice either or at times, but there's not just one, right. yo, I'm, I'm, I'm just complete social justice. I completely well, understand never, you, but I just feel like Jay is smart enough to have known some of this would have happened. Like, he knows the controversy with NFL. You think he went after this solely for a check? It just, just doesn't make sense to me. I, I just think it's no, like... No, no, I think he went, at, went, went after it for the access. I, There's no way he's becoming a, uh, becoming a majority this quick. I don't care. Niggas can love Rock Nation all they want. There's a li there's a lineage and a line of Absolutely. billionaires trying to become right. owners and part owners. Mm -hmm. right. You skip the line with this deal. Mm -hmm. right. You get me? So I think that's the and, access and he got with it. I just it's just the thing. Even with people being mad of like the black community being mad, right? A lot of people, them same people who say everything about Kaepernick, they might not. Let's say they don't watch the Super Bowl, but them niggas just throwing Super Bowl parties every Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl act activities are still going on. Niggas are still getting paid that whole weekend. Right. Nobody's not picking up club bags because they stand with Cap. So I'm just saying it's like, it's so much outrage that I see from so so many people, but they they don't direct it at every single person that says that they stood with Cap or whatever the case may be. So I don't, I, it, it, when it's all in the grand scheme of things, I don't know exactly what it is that he's going after. I compared this to it being a, a dartboard and everybody throwing darts, but don't know what happens when they hit the bullseye. Right. But, the, but the reason why we even sitting here, and I think you guys you guys are really generous in terms of saying either wait and see or we don't know. No, I mean, I, I, I think you make Jay's very good capital. points. Exactly. Because if this is Kanye, we're automatically saying nigga guilty. I mean, the thing about, <laughs> but wait, but, but Kanye, also look at Kanye's moves if we're going to talk about moves, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. 
Kanye's never like he's never expressed no interest in owning anything in sports. Good music doesn't have a sports division or anything. So if we seen something like this from Kanye, it would come completely from left field. I'm just saying it's like when you look at Jay Z and you see all the stuff that he's been doing within sports outside of music for the past ten years from the Nets and building the arena in Brooklyn that brought a lot of jobs to to the and it did it, it did move a lot of people moved a lot of people out the hood as well. Justification, right? right? But I'm just saying, when you look at the moves that he's made, I don't see this as something like, oh my God, how did this happen? I'm just like, okay, let's see what happens. I don't know. We don't know the details of it. That's what yeah, I'm saying. The, the, my overall takeaway take is that I think on every front here, and I think people are looking to entertainers and athletes to be these holistic, I'm standing for a cause. And I think everyone has these, re I don't want to call it selfish, um, reasons but like look at Kaepernick like salute to Nessa and even Kaepernick but you're not the like gatekeeper for the NFL for niggas okay again Kaepernick don't even talk <laughs> basically I've never heard him talk so so again like with all due respect and I and I respect his and everyone's right to protest but not everybody got to hit you up like it feels like even the way how Nessa is going hard is like since Cap ain't involved in this, if Cap was involved in this deal, we all good. But if Cap ain't involved in this deal, and if we're not the face of it, it's a seller. Does that go back to, and that, does that go back to what you said about like, yeah, wanting to make sure shit is right, but actually still worrying about your wallet? Yeah, no, no, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, is is it about you or is it about the cause? I think it's and what, 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 mixture, what mixture of both is acceptable? I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you completely. I understand like why people are upset. I get the backlash. I get the optics. I'm just saying like I want more details first before like I go for Jay's neck. No, no. The, Period. Listen, listen. In terms of what he's doing, Jay's a capitalist, man. I'm not a businessman. Yeah, I'm but he's also done a lot man. of stuff that's no. not just for publicity. Like I read the super long New York Times article a few years ago, right, when they killed Eric Garner, and he had to smuggle shirts into the the Nets arena so they could wear the shirt. You know what I mean? Like he's done stuff that's not just for publicity. We've talked a lot of times about him trying to help people. So, yeah, some cultural capital means something, at least no, a little bit. Of course. No, I just don't think this move is more of a social justice move by Jay more than a business move. I think it's one of the same. I think that I think they just run concurrent among each other. I think that, like, all right, in order for him to, like, he gets in, you'd be a fool to not try to do some business and some shit like this if you're mm -hmm. attaching yourself to something like this and you're in that type of realm, right? But I think that if you can, if you're able to do some good business along with bring in a message or bring bring in opportunities that create me, that create opportunities for people to push their message, mm. then you win both ways. I don't think that this is an L in, in in no way, shape, or form or fashion. But everybody looks at it like, oh, this is the real Illuminati shit that everybody was thinking about this whole time. <laughs> well, you know? Yeah. I mean? Look, there's a lot of mixed feelings about it. So this is all happening on the three year anniversary of uh, Kaepernick initially starting to protest. So let's check out two videos so we can see the opposing view. So one uh, is Eric Reed who played with Kaepernick. Here's what he had to say. Jay Z claimed to be a supporter of Colin. Um, you know, wore his jersey, told people not to perform at the Super Bowl because of the treatment that the NFL. Um, did to Colin, and now he's a, gonna be a part owner. And yeah. it's kind of despicable. <laughs> the part owner thing is funny because he's playing, but on the flip side, Freddie Gibbs also had some thoughts on this. Here's what he had to say I'm riding with Jay Z, straight up, man. Fuck Colin Kaepernick. All y'all niggas march for Colin Kaepernick. And he took a settlement and ain't tell y'all what he got or nothing. You know what I'm saying? He settled. So let it go. Y'all hating on Jay-Z for trying to own something in the NFL, man. Y'all niggas is some motherfucking crabs, bro. You're right. Extreme opposite point of views here. Right. So I agree. I'm kind of tripping because you're saying that from an NFL locker room. Like you're saying that as a, a, a football player that plays for the NFL. So, again, I don't know exactly... What message you're trying to convey by getting out and playing every day for an owner or a potential racist owner, et cetera? Like, yeah, well, I mean, I kind of understand both. I think it's a fine line because you, that's the easy way to think. Mm -hmm. But it, when, when I look at it, you know, Eric Reed, he is playing for, for an NFL team, but he gets to protest every single game. He kneels. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reason why it's he's like, 
we're standing with Cap, even though Cap kneels, ironically, right? But um, it's because essentially Kaepernick, because of him kneeling and bringing attention to it like that, he was forced out of the league. And then, you, you know, salute to Freddie Gibbs, and I love Freddie Gibbs, but I heard people mention in the settlement by Cap, Cap's settlement was only because they proved that the NFL, through collusion or whatever else, right. these owners prevented him from getting the job. Right. That they prevented him from getting the job. That has nothing to do with, okay, you know, we're, we're, we're paying you because, no. Because he lost out on work opportunity and there was somewhat of illegal collusion, they settled. Mm. That has nothing to do with still the mere fact that they d still don't want to hire him. Right. Mm. They still don't want him to be kneeling at their games because it would distract and probably ruin some of their other uh, other people, uh, other um, sponsors and stuff like that. So I don't think I don't think if you're an NFL player, you have to stop playing to send a message. Mm. It's it's about the right of protest, and that's why I like what Jay said. You know, even though you know, I, I guess watching that press conference was so great because Roger Goodell's face was turning red, <laughs> <laughs> it turned to, to like a tomato right. because they asked Jay like, "Yo, will you think about kneeling or protesting?" And Jay did say like, "I feel like we're past protest a bit." But he did defend the well, right to protest. Right, well, past kneeling, right, past yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just the ideology of just, just kneeling. Just kneeling. Right. But, but he did defend the right of protesting. And to be honest, protesting is one of the ways. You, if you ever supported or said Black Lives Matter, you, you're supporting protests. Mm -hmm. right. That's what that is. And, like, if it would be a different conversation if you're saying at a sporting event, an NFL game, is it the right platform? Y'all niggas got Twitters and Instagram. Go kneel on there, you feel me? Yeah. But, um... Jay to defend the right right to protest and, it. And I'm not, like, what you said is, is very right. I can't dispute that. All I'm saying is, is, like, I don't know exactly what it is because if Callan Kaepernick gets a job tomorrow and he wins a Super Bowl and all that, that's not going to stop police from shooting black people. That's not going to stop police from brutalizing black people. That's not going to stop police from not just brutalizing black people, but bru brutalizing all types of people. Like, th that's a, a very special job where you need special people for and that's a whole different conversation so it's like i don't know like how um the the two the two lines blur if any you know? i i think preventing or even trying to ostracize people who protest brought brings back a lot of negative and deep images go back to ferguson when people are getting hit with tear gas when they're right. trying to speak up and they're trying to say hey what happened uh, to Michael Brown? And right. like, I think that's where we kind of like get these imageries. And, and that's why, to be honest, I think a lot of people write hard for it. Mm -hmm. But I do, like, I think one of the things that people have never, and I think Colin, you know, I don't want to say he's dropped the ball, but he's never really responded to. Okay, after the kneeling, what happens? What do you want to happen? Right. You get me? Do you just want to get back a job? Or, or what is the next steps? Because he's he hasn't been vocal, and to be honest, his girlfriend has been way more vocal than him. You know, when you're almost seen as a leader of a cause, maybe he didn't want to be, but you're seen as it. You have to then tell us where we're, where we're going. Um, as bad as things or whatever. Like my only thing with Jay is that if Jay sucker JD out of the deal and took the same deal, <laughs> that's a finesse, man. Brooklyn, <laughs> these Brooklyn niggas, man. <laughs> That's a Marcy nigga, bro. The that's, fuck? That's elite scamming right there. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But but in, in terms of like, you know, even if it like like first of all, you can't tell somebody if NFL offered you a deal, and maybe you don't want to answer it, but if NFL offered you a deal for $10 million to just show up and just give five minutes of analysis that you like on your favorite team, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you would take it. Now, if you could work into the deal that you could give back to your community and also like Whatever they're giving you, try to also help the cause, mm -hmm. which is, that's what I think Jay's doing. Yeah. You know, I think Jay wanted to be an owner, mm -hmm. but if you could work that in with helping the cause, what's the problem? I just didn't like, if, if, if you're telling everybody don't perform, mm -hmm. yo, Trav, yo, trust me, don't perform with this shit, right? Okay, and then you like, JD. Album, Jay's album drops, drops <laughs> at the day of the Super Bowl, and you have to, a new app to download it right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my only problem with it, but like in terms of people calling Jay a sellout, nah, I'm, I'm just saying the Jay finesse everybody right. to miss out on checks, but he's taking it? Ah, uh, uh, who knows? Brooklyn. 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 All right, look, let's see if we get any more details. Thank you, guys. Um, on to some music. So on Friday, Young Thug finally dropped his quote-unquote debut album. It's called So Much Fun. 19 songs, a lot of features on here. Future, Lil Uzi, Gunna, 21, Juice WRLD, Quavo, and 
more. So this is a follow-up to 2018's On The Run. The lead single, of course, was The London with Cole and Travis. I think like, before we start on this, we the person that we really need to ask how they feel is Nadeska. Yeah, you love both. <laughs> <laughs> you really love both. Especially Thugger. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to let you guys take this one away. <laughs> Just gonna no, chill. Get a I'm just, just, just yeah, going to know what's going I'm on. I'm just going to chill. Yo, I like it, but I don't know about this whole debut album thing. Like, I still like Barter 6 and all those projects better, but I'm also not good with, like, two-day album reviews. Like, I need time. That's okay. terminology, though. Oh, all right. Anyway, um, first of all, I know people, and especially Wayno, has warmed up to the London. He loves it now. Yeah. I love it. But when I hear J. Cole and I hear Thugga Thugga, I miss blonde hair, gold teeth Thugga. Okay? Ignan. But, but still on some shit. Right. So when I'm expecting this project, by the way, keep in mind, Thug is slowed down with putting out projects. He's not putting out 20 a week. Mm -hmm. He is slowed down. He's focused on executive stuff. He's developed a lot of artists. They're featured on here, Salute to Duke. So there's a bunch of people, Gunners on here, of course. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous. I'm like, call my fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, and to be know. honest, <laughs> uh, other than my only critique is that it could have been a little bit straight. You know, it's 19 songs. Mm -hmm. It could have been, I think it could have been 16. Yeah, I could have, they could have shortened it. But to be honest, I thought it was dope. I thought it was dope overall. And perhaps it is just, again, this is two or three days re with reviewing right. it. Perhaps it's because I haven't gotten a lot of thug music recently, mm -hmm. so I don't have too much to compare it to. But I was like, I, it was refreshing hearing the thug project. Mm. And um, I, I'm trying to figure out if that's where I am pleasantly happy with the album or perhaps. I'm just only happy that I just got new thug music. Shit, right? Right. But, you know, there's some features that are good. You know, Duke killed it on a, um, on a couple of them joints. He's featured on like one or two. Yeah, two joints. Yeah. Two yeah. joints on there. Um, I, I seen a lot of people like the hot joint with, with, with Gunna. Yeah. Um, I like that. You don't fuck some, with Sup, mate? Hmm? You don't fuck with, with Sup, mate? That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Sup, mate is fire. <laughs> like, sur 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 Surf. Surf, I felt it was a little bit repetitive, but, I, but trust me, wherever, a lot of places I went where there was Thug fans that were fucking with that a lot. So, right. you know, overall, I liked it, man. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I'm not, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of, a few, well, I'm not going to say a lot, but a few drinks that he gave snippets of, like him driving in the car is on here, right? Like, I'm scared is, is, is one of those shits. I didn't know that he was going to put 21 and Doughboy on it, but it's good to see Doughboy like we said, you know, he got the drunk with Future, see him catching his wave now. But like, I, for me, I was cool with it. Like, I, I fuck with this album. I don't I don't think that like, it, it wasn't disappointing in no way to me, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't really disappointing in no way to me. I think like, Thug is not the same Thug from 2014. You know what I mean? That with him and Rich, thug, 2015. 2015, Rich Homie Kwan and him, like back to back, all of that shit. But in his executive role, I didn't I didn't think that he'd be able yeah, to. You to my nigga Thug fell off? No, 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 but it's just what you said. That was a great era. Like, Barter 6 was great. I even loved Jeffrey. Like, yeah, come on. This like, one didn't hit as hard on first. Not saying, but let's hope more time. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. comparing them, but like, it's like, all that right. That was a crazy run Wayne for wasn't like, Wayne in 2008, and then Wayne, when he came home and did Carter 4, wasn't the same Wayne. It's like, you know what I mean? It wasn't the, the same okay. type of Wayne. It's like, just a kind of different perspective from Thug. Like, you know, it's the first record, he starts off kind of rapping. Like, you know what I mean? That's why, I, I think that's the only <laughs> one where J. Cole was like, all right, nigga, this is the only one you're <laughs> going to do where everybody can actually understand every word you're saying. You know what I mean? But but I fuck with it overall. Like, I would definitely listen to it. I've been listening to it this whole weekend. Yeah, I will say in terms of them saying that this is an album, and I, I always said it. I said it with um, Slime Language. By the way, my snake is still doing great. Oh, he's alive still? He's wow. lying, yo. Send a picture. Show us proof. I don't yeah. believe you. How, how much you want to bet I'll bring him on set? Is he I ain't got to do all that. Huh? Nah, he is big. He, oh, really? He Gross? Not, not like in terms of with paws, but like yeah, this is kind of crazy. in terms of length. <laughs> anyway, anyway, no. Remember, one of my... One of my um, wasn't really criticism, but just comments on slime language is mm -hmm. that the thing about Thug when it comes to his tapes, if your Thug's cousin, which he does put his cousin on his albums right. or on his tapes, like uh, you have Dolly on on there, mm -hmm. which is cousin or whatever. Uh, you have his girlfriend on there, salute to Jerrica Carly, like mm -hmm. he puts her on there. But I, I said when it came to his album, you're gonna see more of the mainstream, like you want to see the. Thug a Quavo, mm -hmm. and f for a lot of like even slime language, you didn't see that much. Yeah. I mean, you saw Gunner, but you didn't see like a lot of other people. You saw Twenty One Savage on here. Mm -hmm. You saw a little bit more mainstream people. Yeah. 
Uh, we had one fan question. You kind of addressed it a little bit. They wanted to know who you guys thought had the best feature. He thought it was uh, Lil Duke, which Axe seemed to agree with. Bueno, would you agree? The best feature? Mm -hmm. Shit. The uh, standout feature? The best feature? I, I, I like Gunna. I like Gunna on Hot, but then I also like 21 on, um, I like 21 on I'm Scared. Okay. Yeah. So a couple of good ones. And then the second part of his question were, um, since it's, do you feel like it's the right time for a YSL compilation album now that his label is at its peak? We were just saying, we have not been flooded with thugger music, so are we good right now? I thought that was like slime language. Like slime language <laughs> was the compilation if niggas was paying attention. Like, if, <laughs> if, if you listen to slime language, everybody's on that shit. Like, that was the, that was the compilation. <laughs> like, yeah. Compilation, you're right. Yeah, there I guess go. it just wasn't presented as YSL. They you just know what tried mean? to like, present it as something confusing. Like how Dreamville time. did yeah. they shit. Like, that's right. not, you're not gonna Juicy get that. Juicy compilation right. presents. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm gonna get that. Um, whew. all right, Nicki Minaj. So last week, I uh, remember Joe Budden and his podcast grew on her Beats One show, and then she did his podcast, and they started talking about her issues with Rick Ross. So if you remember, on the 2017 song, Apple of My Eye, Ross had a line basically saying, uh, if you were meek, you wouldn't trust Nicki. Mm -hmm. So she addressed this on Budden's podcast. Here's what she had to say. I'm the one, I went and sat down in a meeting with Obama, President Obama, and Ross was there and texted dude after the meeting and said yo this chick is a keeper i saw the text myself with my own eyes this chick is a keeper she went in a whole in a room full of rappers and spoke to obama and the first thing out of her mouth was about you and and figuring out your 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 uh, probation situation and why you're still on probation after all these years and then you come out on a on an album when it's time to sell some weak ass fucking album and try to disrespect Nicki minaj what and now you tried to do it. Now you tried to disrespect 50, tried to hope 50 would respond to your nonsense this time. Boy, sit your fat ass down. I wish I could say my name like that. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> um, well, I feel like usually you might never hear Ross's response to this, but conveniently enough, he did just drop an album and he is doing press. Uh, he was on The Breakfast Club. Here's what he had to say in response to Nicki. When all the young to go see Barack. I mean, if somebody went in to meet Obama with you, she is a keeper until you find out otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, me personally, you nah, know, she was around me a few times, but other than that, she was a huge talent, but she 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 was playing a very uh, important position at the time. She was in between Meek and Drake at the time. And what she don't know and she may not understand coming from a big homie like myself playing that position, that was a very fragile role. And it was it would be very easy to put that um, responsibility on her. Mm. But that ain't what, you know, I tried to make it to. Hmm. What do you guys think? Uh, honestly, so I think we're, we're missing information here, at least for me to really get an accurate like opinion on this mm -hmm. because I agree with Nikki in terms of like yo throughout the whole thing with the issue with Meek and Drake you know Nikki who's a label mate of Drake she held it down a lot for Meek you know and you know even saying that one of the first things she said to President Obama at the time was hey listen my boyfriend right that's what she's saying like yo he's on he, like he's on probation blah blah Basically, like, she's lobbying for him. Mm -hmm. Ross didn't get too much into it. And and by the way, this is all about the line or the couple lines on uh, Apple of My Eye. And I think Ross was trying to say, and this is where I'm assuming, okay. because he didn't get too much into it. I think he was saying that Nikki, especially, and by the way, like, we have critiques of Nikki. I have critiques of Nikki. Like, if Nikki told a judge, supposedly, or Nikki was laughing while they're in court when... Meek's freedom, that's wild, right? If Nikki, what, well, not even if Nikki, she backed up the judge when the judge was saying, no, Meek, um, this is how it went down in the chambers. You and your girlfriend was there. And she took the side of the judge. Now Meek looks like the liar. Of course Meek's going to feel a certain type of way. But the apple of the eye and, and his explanation is talking about what her role while they were beefing. Mm -hmm. I feel like Ross was almost trying to say she didn't, she either instigated, she was maybe one of the reasons that it got to that level, or the way how she played it, and, and that's where I don't understand it. Um, 
caused that issue to get to where it was. Mm. And because of that, that's why he mentioned on the track, she can't be trusted. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that, um, and Nikki's hilarious, yo, but um, I think that Ross is right in the sense of that's a very like fragile role to play because she is, end of the day, I mean, I, I, when I think of Nikki, I don't think of Young Money, but she is still Young Money no matter what. You know, they all came up together. So I think that is a very, like, like crazy place to be in. And giving her the benefit of the doubt, I'm pretty sure that was tough for her, too. Right. You know, she got a great relationship with Wayne and Drake and all of that, and they doing their thing and getting money together. And then you, your boyfriend is beefing with the nigga, and it's like you don't want to pick sides. But I, I understand where Ross is coming from, you know what I mean? But I also understand what she did by going and speaking at Obama. Like, she did what she was supposed to do. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, whomever you was dealing with, if they was in a tough predicament and you get the opportunity to talk to the person in the highest seat, you would try to get them out of that situation. So I don't think that that's like a, um, I don't think she's wrong for, the, or, or she tried to do it just to do it. She was sincere in doing that, but I don't think that Ross is wrong with what he's saying. Like how he delivered the message. Now how he put it in the rhyme and then him giving context behind it, it makes sense. I don't think he was trying to diss her or disrespect her. I just think that that was, yeah, you got to question if you should trust her or not because in the end, they're not even together anymore. But, but to be honest though, and I think this is what Nikki's like, a lot of what she's been, her little press run, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's done or continuing, she's, she wants credit for certain shit she feels like people has overlooked and she feels like she's critiqued at any possibility or juncture that she could have done wrong. And I think she's like, yo, for your artist, when everybody turned against him in 2015, I rode for him. I brought him on tour. When everybody was trying to act like he's done, brought him on tour. I show up in front of Obama, I mention his name. Damn it, nigga, if the only comment you could have about that is not even, yo, Nikki held it down, but it could have been Nikki held it down, but then. Yeah, but I think she's like, yo, damn, the only comment you got is we shouldn't trust her when in the midst of it, mm -hmm. I was holding down. I mean, but at the same time, it's like, I don't look at it as your artist. That was her man. They was in a relationship together. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I get that. But at the same time, it's like, I don't look at it like she did anything differently than she was supposed to do. I mean, like if, you, if you're dealing with an artist and an artist of that caliber, it would make sense for y'all to be, they had a record together. You know what I mean? Like, like they had wreck. They had. I think, she, a, I think she extended herself. Like she ain't got. She ain't had to bring him on. She tour. don't have to. But I'm just saying. Like that's end of the day. Like that. Not only is he an artist, but that's her man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like at the time, like that's her man. I think that that was gonna happen. Like that was inevitable. They together. They was around each other. If if everybody's turning their back on him, who more to be in his corner than the woman he's with? Hey, all I'm going to say is that relationships don't dictate career moves. And and at that point, Nikki was, or she still is that chick. But trust me, Quavo ain't bringing Saweetie on tour, okay? <laughs> all right? You might. Oh, How do you man. know? How do you know that, you man? Know? They, they, they everywhere is... together, man. <laughs> why would, why they would everywhere he... together. You think, you think Sweetie can't come out and do a song every night? Yo, you foul, man. No, no. <laughs> you foul, she can man. come out. But she gonna get the yo. Know, she gonna get the little high school auditorium like lights. Well, she not, yo. She not that. gonna get main. Yo, he went, he went, it was Nicki think... than Meek on that tour. Stop playing, nah, bro. Nah, man. He not gonna have <laughs> her Nikki opening too. up. He have her come out on the set and do the song. Hey, act you a foul, my nigga. Don't do that, <laughs> Stop, man. baby. No, all I'm that. saying is that yo, academics doesn't love love. That's what it he is. He doesn't no, love love. No, all I'm saying is that like Nicki held it down like on some career shit, and you know. When she was one of the only people, the barbs, even though like shit, they've been terrorizing me recently. We beefing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like I do give her a little credit for how she held it down in that moment because if a lot of people who are thinking about their career before someone else, hey, yeah, I love you and everything, babe, but I gotta go on tour. I'm gonna go pick some other rappers. I'm going with Future and I'm going with like. So if you were to finally shoot your shot at Tanasha, you wouldn't take her on tour and let her open up. <laughs> it's over. Oh my God, yo, you are I, 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 read, I read her tweets. Yo, she was tweeting like yesterday, the day before, You'd on be Twitter, her, huh? and she said she was in the club like a regular customer, and she was <laughs> oh very God. depressed. Be and, and really, I read it as, <laughs> yo, she said, I, I wish she saw was this tweet, and he's really interpreting it in a she very. She said, I wish it was 2009 again. That was that was it. Two one was in 2009. No, that no, was like 2014. But oh, much, <laughs> she's trying to go back in time to try to go and recreate the shit again. Man, I'm you, sorry. This is how he talks about ben a woman he's been, it's, it's it's he's been crushing on. It's not me. It's been crushing on. We gotta find out who's the next crush he Goodness got. Goodness gracious! No, I, still, I still like her. You're heartless. You still. <laughs> we'll bring her back from death. 
You're so disrespectful. She's like getting a soldier boy moment? What the fuck? Oh, man. Sorry, man. Roger, can, we, can boy, we just man. go to some quick hits before we go? I think we're almost out of time. Right. By the way, you guys think Nikki's going to release music soon? She just dropped a remix. Course. We'll talk about this tomorrow. There must be something happening. Of She's course. doing a ton of uh, press at the moment. Well, talking a lot. Anyway, so Offset has a new uh, big investment. Uh, so he confirmed that he's investing in the esports team FaZe Clan. Uh, he told esports inside of the deal, I love gaming and esports is the future. These two facts only make it right that I'd be part of the biggest esports organization with some of the best players in the world. Good move by Offset, you guys think? Great move by Offset. Very. I, it had to be advised, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, it definitely was advised. Offset never going broke. Like, I think, like, esports gaming, the, the thing about esports gaming is, like, it's an amazing thing. Like, I always say, like, if I'd have known I could have made money playing video games, I'd have never gotten music and none of that shit because I we love playing video games. We know never be here with us, yeah. For real. But um, I think that's 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 really dope. That's really dope. Especially with him being a father. You know he's going to implement them kids into that. Mm. No, as he should. Absolutely. Should. Uh, uh, salute to FaZe Clan. Salute to Banks. He's one of the owners um, of FaZe Clan, or original founding members. That's a hundred million plus company. Mm. Um, by the way, salute to Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez has a investment with another gaming company called LG. Drake has a, um, by the way, the same one with Tory Lanez, Michael Jordan's also um, invested in. And Drake invested in a new upstart one called 100 Thieves. Salute to my man Nate Shot on that. What I will say is that from what I've seen with some of those deals, how they're doing it, but this is why it's smart, right? Mm -hmm. You're a hundred million dollar company right now. They're making a lot of money. They don't need, even two to five million dollars from Offset, they don't need it. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is that they're trying to create and they're trying to make that bridge of crossing over from gaming to really just that influence. Industry, that influence. Mm -hmm. So from what I've seen with other deals that's like this, Offset didn't have to pay nothing. They probably it's almost an endorsement deal, but they give him equity. That's great. Be like, hey, listen, we're worth this right now. We'll give you this in stocks. Right now it's private still. Wow. Hey, whenever we go public. It'll be worth whatever, but now you you get to wear the brand on your sleeve. We you, we get collaboration events, you know, like OVO Fest last year. Drake had the gaming org that he um, invested in. He brought them in and, and, and kind of like ingratiated them in the fold into the weekend. Mm. So I do think this is how things are going into the future. And Shadow Wayno bueno as a manager, if. If, if people realize that once you're an artist, mm. like the ancillary income that comes around that and, and the amount of money you can make by doing other things, right? Like, shit, Offset was just on live with Cardi B and he was dissing a very popular game, which was Fortnite, but he was like, yo, I'm a Call of Duty guy. Right. FaZe, they're huge in Call of Duty. Of course. Come over here. <laughs> Let's get this money. Right. So I like it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, this, this is dope, yo. This is dope. It's good to see artists make like, other type of moves that's gonna help them sustain because that's where you're gonna make your money at in the end. Like Offset, I mean, I'm pretty. You know what's crazy? Do we believe that the Migos like one day will be performing like how Kiss performs, like oh, when they're wow. older and I shit, so. still doing shows? Hope so. <laughs> Imagine that. But I mean, it, that's that's good that he's building sustainable income outside of just music. You know? What's good with uh, Under Sticks? Mm? Oh no, it's coming back really soon. I'm trying to get some some really good guests. I'm trying to look for who got any other feature. No shit about mm. gaming. Don't ask me. Nah, I'm a feature regular niggas. I'm not a feature. Oh. Gaming. Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. He's a big Street it's, Fighter guy. Ooh. Oh, shit, he probably beat my ass though. Exactly. Hey man, you guys step your game up. Lupe Fiasco. He he be good for gaming. My man have too. But yeah, no, no, even even like watching Meek with lids and shit like that. Like those are the moves I think really you know. Beyond, of course, like the rat race of who's streaming the best or who's the hottest now, mm -hmm. what song we're talking about. Like, nigga, I'm always going to be a list. <laughs> That's fact. <laughs> so I, I think those are great moves. Dope. Uh, everything except the NFL, guys. You got to be careful with that one. <laughs> All right. We, <laughs> we got to go. Yeah. We got to go. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you here tomorrow on Everyday Struggle.